The National Library Calcutta, formerly known as the Imperial Library, is an institution recognized by the government of India as a very special establishment devoted to the promotion of library services in India. The Constitution of India, 1950, specifically mentions that the institution known as the National Library, Calcutta, is an institution of national importance. The old Viceregal Lodge, known as the Belvedere, houses the main library. The library has nearly two million documents, comprising of books, bound volumes of periodicals, maps, manuscripts, and Indian and foreign official publications. The National Library, Calcutta is a recipient library under the delivery of books and newspapers act of 1954 as amended in 1956 the membership rules of this library are so liberal that anyone who has attained the age of 18 can utilize its services the users of the library's reading rooms represent all segments of the society the library is a subordinate institution under the Department of Culture in the Government of India. Mahatma Gandhi said, I do not want my house to be walled in on all sides and my windows to be stuffed. I want cultures of all lands to be blown about my house as freely as possible, but I refuse to be flown off my feet by any. This legend at the entrance of the library summarizes its policies and services. To make the long story short, the Calcutta Public Library, which was the ancestor of the present National Library, was opened to the public on the 21st of March, 1836. It was housed in the Metcalf Hall the today's National Library's services are planned, programmed, and conducted most efficiently and to the best possible extent. The National Library today possesses some of the extremely rare books and periodicals useful to research scholars. As a result of the personal interest and initiative taken by Lord Curzon, the Imperial Library Indentures and Validation Act of 1902 came into being and the Imperial Library was declared open for the public on the 30th of January, 1903. It was intended that the Imperial Library should be a library of reference, a working place to students and a repository of material for the future historians of India. McFarlane the first librarian of the Imperial Library was from the British Museum. He arranged the collections of the library systematically and initiated the publication of printed catalogues. Harinath Day, who succeeded McFarlane, worked for four years. The credit of starting the first library training program in 1935 goes to Asadullah. With the dawn of freedom, the founding fathers of the new nation transformed the former imperial library into the national library by an act of law known as the Imperial Library Change of Name Act of 1948. One of the important problems was to find a suitable place for housing the library permanently. This problem was solved very soon by the magnanimous gesture of the then Governor General of India, Sri C. Rajagopalachari, who offered the Viceroy's palace in Calcutta, called the Belvedere Palace, with its sprawling green lawns. The new National Library at Belvedere was declared open to the nation by the then Union Minister for Education, Maulana Abul Kalam Azad. We met Padmashri Professor B.S. Keshavan, 
the first librarian of the National Library who literally transformed the earlier imperial institution into a temple of knowledge. At that time, the librarian was very indifferent, library was very indifferently housed in several different places, in Jabal Kusum House and in Esplanade. It so happened that during war time, because of apprehension of bombing of Calcutta, the core of books of the National Library were sent England to various places and they had all been brought back and very temporarily stored in a very unsatisfactory manner in a Jabakusam house and in the Esplanade stack room. Then when I saw the situation, when I saw the beautiful core of books which has been inherited from Fort William, invaluable books going to the devil as it were because of unfortunate housing, I was at a loss as to what to do. Unfortunately, a thought occurred to me. Why should I not ask for an audience with Rajaji, who was at that time the governor of West Bengal, who has known me from my childhood? And I asked for an audience. I got it. I literally looked over his shoulder. And I told him the desperate situation that we were. And then he said, what do you expect me to do? I am only the governor of Hesper Gaul. And I said, sir, don't say that. If you make up your mind, you can certainly help me out. Tell me, tell me what I do in your mind. And then I said, I have been going through the length and breadth of Calcutta. I have seen large areas which are really lying waste and which could be utilized for the purpose of building up a national library and the amenities of the national library. What have you in mind, he said. I have in mind that remarkable campus of Belvedere. And then I was surprised. A slow smile spread over his face. And then he said, Keshwan, it's interesting that you should mention this because just now Jawaharlal has written to me that I'm going to be the Governor General designate. And it is the privilege of the Governor General designation to make submission as to the use of the Governor General's properties. I immediately stood up and bowed to him in respect, congratulating and he said, sorry, I shouldn't have said that to you. The news should not be given out until the afternoon. I hope you will hold your patience. And then, one thing after that happened after the other, I went and saw this new campus. My heart lifted up when I saw the magnificent context of it. I wrote a report sent to him. He sent it back to Delhi. And from Jawaharlal came a magnificent note saying that he agreed entirely with Rajaji's suggestion and that the National Library should be meant for the housing of the entire corpus of material that constitutes the National Library and to develop the amenities that should be cultivated for those who are working for the particular library. The National Library is a department of the Ministry of Human Resources Development. The director is the overall head of the institution, assisted by two professional librarians. There are deputy and assistant librarians to look after technical and professional work, while the administrative officers assist the director in administrative matters. The library is organized on a functional basis. The technical and professional functions operate under the two main divisions, the professional and conservation. The professional divisions look after acquisition, processing, maintenance of reading materials, and readers' services. The conservation division looks after reprography, preservation, and laboratory functions. In National Library, there are many divisions, such as acquisitions division, lending division, reading rooms, main stock room, Asutosh and other special collections, foreign languages division, children's library, and so on. The National Library has some notable gift collections which have enriched its holdings considerably. Some of these are Asutosh's collection of 76,000 books.
बुहार जादूनाथ सरकार डॉक्टर एस एन सैन वैयापुरी पिल्लई कलेक्शंस एंड द आर्काइवल पेपर्स ऑफ श्री तेज बहादुर सप्रू All the functions of the National Library are in accordance with the aims and objectives laid down by the Reviewing Committee under the chairmanship of Sri V S Cha in 1969. These aims and objectives of the National Library are acquisition and conservation of all significant printed material produced in the country to the exclusion of ephemera. collection of printed material concerning the country wherever it is published and also acquisition of a photographic record of such material that is not available within the country acquisition and conservation of manuscripts of national importance planned acquisition of foreign material required by the country rendering of bibliographical and documentation services of retrospective material both general and specialized acting as a reference center pervading full and accurate knowledge of all sources of bibliographical information and participation in international bibliographical activities provision of photocopying and reprographic services and acting as the center for international book exchange and international loan all the programs of the national library are in accordance with these objectives so we have some ongoing programs and there are some future plans of the library the library is also a repository for the united nations documents and its agencies it has built up a rich collection of united nations publications for a long time the library followed a classification scheme of its own which was developed on the lines of the british museum library but since late 50s books are being classified according to the dewey decimal classification and editions 16 and 19 have been used for the purpose along with cutters three figure author tables for book numbers the library catalog is both in card and in printed forms the cataloging system follows the anglo american cataloging rules aacr1 of 1967 and aacr2 of 1978 and also the rules of the descriptive cataloging of the library of congress the card catalog is in the dictionary form and is arranged in two sequences author and subject the printed catalog of the library is available in 10 volumes covering the alphabets a to z lending service is rather peculiar to a national library as most national libraries are for reference only and seldom offer lending services to individuals except rare and out of print books gift collections and government publications on an average more than 300 books are lent every day for home reading apart from this facility interlibrary loan service is extended both at national as well as international levels the main reading room accommodates 320 readers at a time and the library maintains 10 reading rooms for using special material the main reading room stocks a very selective collection of 10000 volumes on open access basis for facilitating study and research in specific fields of knowledge the bibliography division of the national library was established in 1951 with an aim to function as an active agent to disseminate knowledge and information in an organized and effective manner in pursuance of this objective 
bibliographies on special topics are supplied to scholars, researchers, and writers, free of charge to suit to their requirements. The National Library also brings out retrospective bibliographies on subjects of national interest. The bibliography project on Indology is one such effort. Plain paper copiers are installed in the reading rooms and facilities are provided for obtaining copies of journal articles, small technical reports, and the like on nominal charges to scholars and researchers. Conservation of documents of national importance is one of the basic functions associated with the National Library. Many of the modern techniques concerned with the preservation of the valuable material are applied for this purpose by the Conservation Division of the Library. Modernization in different areas of activity relating to the functioning of the library is the need of the day. The library proposes computerization of its major activities in a phased manner. In the first phase, acquisition and serials control activities are proposed to be computerized. The subsequent phases envisage information retrieval system for readers' services, production of national union catalog in computer-readable form, and many other such programs. The National Library has HP 3000 mini computer system and is presently experimenting with some of these problems using Minisys software package. And what about the security system? To prevent books from being stolen and pages being torn. <laughs> This has helped the Government of India to publish the Indian National Bibliography as an authoritative classified record of current Indian publications. The first issue of the bibliography was released on the 15th of August, 1958. The then librarian, Professor B.S. Keshavan, was responsible for the planning, editing, and publishing of this bibliography. A remarkable thing happened in 1954. Our parliament passed a legislation which was really a blessing to the scholarly world. Every one of us knows how our country teams with several highly developed, highly expressive languages. And publishing in all these languages has resulted in so much of printing activity and there was no way in which all these books could be caught, brought in a central place. In the absence of legislation, this was not possible. So the parliament said it will become obligatory on the part of a printer and the publisher who should send every copy of the book that he publishes within a month of its publication to several important centers in the country. And we are all very happy with this. And unfortunately, there is only one drawback for this. The publisher had to send all these books by registered post at his own expense and within a month of the publication. Well, in spite of this drawback, for the first six or seven years, the Delhi of Books Law worked beautifully and we received at the National Library and various other centers which were named by the Parliament books that published that were published in all the languages of this country. And the listing of these books scientifically and a periodical publishing of these books 
which constitutes what is called the national bibliography of the country, was published. And the first volume was presented to the Prime Minister of India with great pride. And then we drew his attention to this fact. Sir, there is one particular difficulty. If a publisher does not send his book to us, we have no means of doing anything about it. He said, why? Because Article 31A of your Constitution tells you that you cannot confiscate private property without compensation. And then Panditji laughed. Mr. Keshavan, you must have faith in our people. So far, you have yourself said that in this first issue, nearly 80% of your publishers have sent the books. And I'm sure their patriotism will see to it that they will still continue to send them to you. And I'm glad to say that this publication was greeted all over the world with plaudits. And we were congratulated for having brought out a multilingual national bibliography in all the languages of this particular country, and which was a proud achievement indeed. The National Library has over two million different categories of documents. It receives nearly 20,000 periodical titles. The library has a total budget of over 50 lakhs, of which nearly 15 lakhs are being spent on the purchase of books alone. A staff of nearly 800 persons are engaged in its functioning. The National Library at Calcutta is certainly vital to the society, since knowledge and information are vital for an all-round human development.